Congressman Neal could not make it today. He sent in his regrets. He's been very supportive of the project. Um, he does have an aide here somewhere, although his aide had a flat tire as he was desperately trying to get here. But, but his office has also been very supportive of the project. Um, and Rick Marquis, who's with Federal Highway, who I think couldn't make it here as well. But Federal Highway has been incredibly supportive at sort of those details of how do we get the money from the federal government to mass DOT to get the money spent. They've been great. Um, so the federal government sort of financed this. The state government has made the whole project work. So I will say, you know, I've been working on rail trails for about 12 years. And in that 12 years, the whole political climate has changed a lot. I would say that, you know, these days, there's an enormous amount of support in the state legislature for rail trails and Mass DOT. They are great partners, um, and a lot of that has to do with Mass DOT, who's had a lot of changes we love, um, and a lot has to do with our with our delegation. Um, so Senator Nepek is going, to, who's from uh, East Hampton. Um, credit, a lot of his credit goes to you. Wayne, thank you very much, and uh, let me also uh, thank my colleagues uh, from the legislature who will uh, join us in a couple of moments. Uh, we should be on the East Hampton people over here, the Northampton people over there, but uh, this really is a, a, a great indication of perhaps driving a green spike here in the 21st century to connect these two communities, and, and that really is exciting. Uh, Congressman, I want to thank you personally for all of your effort in advocating for these, bringing the money home, making sure that the citizens we all collectively represent can enjoy the next incarnation of these canal lines, the rail lines, now these uh, bike trails. And uh, uh, my district is bisected from East Hampton, Southampton, Westfield, and Southwick, right into the 30 miles that goes into the state of Connecticut. And this truly is a visionary resource for the Pioneer Valley. And John, without your support, and you're driving this process, none of it would be possible. So the Southwick piece, as you said, is done. Westville, we've got these rivers all over town that are problematic, but we'll get that done with your help. And Southampton had a meeting last week to discuss their feasibility study. And, and Mayor uh, Tausnick and the Manhattan Committee, you've driven the process here locally for us in the uh, city of East Hampton. And it really has been gratifying because these have all been generated at the local level, grassroots support. Then you bring the ideas to those of us in public service, and, and we hope after a period of time, and as John said, a decade seems to be the uh, the time frame, uh, things actually happen. So I'm delighted to be here on behalf of the citizens I represent, not just in East Hampton, but throughout the Pioneer Valley, to thank all of the folks who worked so hard to make this day possible. Thank the taxpayers, of course, of the Commonwealth and the United States of America for allowing us to enjoy this. But this is a great day for these sister cities. One more way to join them in so many ways. And, and my hat's off to DOT as well because they've been the ones driving this process locally for us at the state level. So thank you very much and congratulations on a great day. John, thank you. Senator Rosenberg, who represents Northampton, North and East, uh, who's also been incredibly helpful on this project. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we're going to go back and forth between the two sides, uh, you know, the Hatfields and the McCoys. Oh, Hatfield, no, they're not involved today. Um, well, look, again, thank you and congratulations to all of the local leaders, to the citizens who have been active on this, to the planners, to, to Merrill and to the highway, federal highway people. But again, I, I want to uh, pay special homage to uh, Congressman Olver. And the reason for that is that because he had the vision, he was the guy who started bike paths in Massachusetts. And he didn't only see it as a recreational opportunity for good health and getting people outdoors, etc. He saw it as creating an alternative transportation system. And uh, there was an excellent article in the newspaper the other day which really captured just how much progress has been made over the last 30 years or so creating this system and as John said there are still a few more places that we've got to finish but you'll be able to go virtually anywhere you want to go by bicycle when his vision is realized and it was his vision that created this idea and I call him the grandfather of bike paths and bike trails in Massachusetts. He's almost of the age of great-grandfather, but we don't talk about age and John Olver in the same sentence if we're talking to the guys in Boston, right? Because they think he's too 
tall to be in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> John, you've done a wonderful job. You've had a, a wonderful vision, and you've provided the leadership. And for the young people here, um, this is an object lesson in what people do together to make things happen, to make things better. The people who are paying for this trail are from all over the country. Hopefully many of them will come and use it, but most of the members, most of the people in the country who paid for this are never even going to see it. And we're building bike trails and bike paths in their states too. And also that political leadership over a long period of time with persistence and patience and vision can produce something really wonderful. And so thank you again to everyone who participated in this and, uh, and especially you, John. And we wish you many, many more years of professional success. <laughs> So I guess it's term for the time for the McCoys. So it represents Cybeck. <laughs> yeah, I think there's one other piece we have to realize, and that's the economic benefit of this. You know, when you think back of, of, of the vision that that, that John had, um, and I think of other people, you know, Craig Delapena, the people who really promoted what would happen in terms of biking here, and, and, and there's some, some things that we're now taking for granted. You know, we're taking for granted the fact that the that the bike racks are now sitting on front of the PVTA buses year round. We, we've got people who, who are recognizing that we should be utilizing these bike, tra bike trails as a form of transportation year-round. And despite the fact that the snow could be six inches deep or eight inches deep, there are people who are still doing that and using it as a, as a form of transportation. Obviously reducing our carbon footprint, promoting what we've got in terms of exercise, in terms of activity, better use of, of the property. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at Ralph Sturgeon over there, and, and, and we heard about the difficulty of trying to maneuver uh, through downtown Northampton. Ralph tried to teach me a couple of years ago, and I'm, I'm a very slow learner. Uh, but to have these sorts of options and opportunities, it, it's more than just what you see here today. There's a financial impact, there's an economic and ecological impact that really will, will be uh, realized for generations. Uh, I can remember, you know, close to 30 years ago, and people talked about this vision, and I and I had to be cynical and thought, there is no way we're going to have bike trails that are going from here all the way down to the Connecticut border. It seemed impossible that somebody could go from Belchertown to 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 Florence that you could go down to Connecticut, but it's reality now. And, and so I appreciate it, appreciate your efforts and, and your being here. And I think the best way to ensure that we continue to have these things and they continue to grow and, and become more popular is to be able to demonstrate through utilization. Uh, and, and I think a key to the utilization is finding another use of glass besides putting it in, in rail trips. But thank you, Congressman, for your efforts and everyone for being here. Thank you. So this, this project is all federal money, um, but most of the rail trails have a small state match. And there was a point during the peak of the big dig when the state match was almost impossible to get. Um, and Representative Cocott was incredibly useful calling us up and saying, you know, how do we get the state to match this? And then doing this as a name project, uh, Senator uh, Rosenberg helped as well in that process. So thank you, Representative. Um, let me talk about a radical concept. There are too many congressmen east of Worcester. Okay? Way too many. And right now there's there's a process happening, some of you might call it mischief, where they're trying to reduce the number of congressmen and they're always looking west. Let me say this today. The, the legislators here are going to keep John over in Congress. Okay? Woo. Number two, this is also sort of a sad time for me because unfortunately we are losing the best mayor in Massachusetts. And and I just want to say what a pleasure it's been working with her. <laughs> this is the, the best mayor in Massachusetts. She has changed the landscape of this community in western Massachusetts. She's made this city a better place to live, uh, live and work. And I want to thank her for, for everything she's done.